Hello and welcome. This is Dave Meyer with Busy Web welcoming you to our busy webinar today on what not to do on the web. It's the kind of stuff that makes you go like this when you visit your website or when you're looking around the web. It might be things that take a long time to load, might be things that just make your eyeballs want to bleed, but for sure they don't help you grow your business. And so we're going to talk about some of those don'ts. It's going to be a pretty quick meeting today or a quick pretty quick event, but we do welcome your questions in order to get you acclimated to what you can do to ask those questions. I'm going to switch screens here for just a moment. And what we'll do is just go down here and uh, from the Busy Web website, of course, you're probably viewing this right from this article, which is right here, of course. And you'll note that right here on the Busy Webinar Web Don'ts post is a link to a Google Plus page. If you go to that Google Plus Hello page, and welcome. This is Dave Meyer. Dave Meyer. And Meyer this is the Web thing Web. that you need to be careful of because I just started the event. Um, so as we look at this, then you go from this page and you click on Google Plus. And then from Google Plus, you'll be taken to this page. And what you'll see here is Q&A and live. And if you click on this button right here, it's going to take you into the actual webinar itself where you'll be able to watch this live and ask questions. What that looks like from there is you'll see inside of this that there's a ask a new question button inside of the Q&A tool. So if you click the green ask a question button, like what? are some examples of terrible websites. You click that, you click enter, and it'll pop right in there and we'll have that question listed for everybody to look at. I will be taking a few breaks during the event today to look at those Q&As. If you're having issues, you're welcome to dial us up on our um, conference line and I'll give you that number in just a moment. But that's how to ask questions. So again, if you go from the event page, and you might be watching the event right from this link, but you're going to want to click on the Google Plus link. You'll need to have your Google Plus account or your Gmail account in order to log into that, but you'll browse through this link to join. And then you, when you click on here, you'll see this. You'll be able to watch the event right from that note or right from this page, but then you'll also be able to ask questions. We have a whole bundle of viewers already, so I'm going to get right down to business and let's talk about what not to do on the web. We're gonna talk through, of course, a little bit about us, but um, as we look at this, um, there's character spacing inside of here. Let's click that off. Technical stuff, of course, very apropos for today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about busy web, and then as we get into what not to do on the web, we're gonna talk about design issues, usability, search engine optimization, and content, as well as miscellaneous awfulness that we see across the web quite often. So thank you very much for joining, and let's get right down to business. BusyWeb, of course, is a web design company. We're uniquely um, optimized for this kind of a conversation because we see some pretty terrible websites and help our clients see their way through to a beautiful website that does what it needs to do. You know, I'm going to get beyond just the eye bleedy stuff today and talk about some common themes that you'll want to watch out for and some common pitfalls that otherwise well-intentioned business owners will take if they're trying to build out their website, especially if they're short on time because there are some shortcuts that wind up biting you in the behind as you walk through your website. And so we'll look at that. When, when BusyWeb builds websites for our clients, we build them so that they seamlessly integrate both with search engine optimization techniques to help you get found on the web, but also with social media. So when, the, when you update your website, that active publishing also publishes across all of your social media accounts. And of course, it's also important to have a great looking social media presence, and we help our clients with that as well. Enough about us, let's get to the craziness. Here's some things not to do on the web, and we're gonna go through a few categories inside of this, and then I'm going to save a little bit of time for a tour where I'll kind of freeform and talk. If you would like me to look at your website, if you're feeling very brave, we can um, actually go to your site and I can offer up some suggestions on what to do better. Um, we'll phrase those in the most positive terms possible, so I won't single anybody out for being, for being crazy or awful, but we will help you if you do have those questions. If you're also wondering about specific things in either search engine optimization or social media integration, please do log those questions via the Q&A tool. 
and we'll help you out at that time. So first up, design issues. You know, some common things to look at include having too many colors on your site or clashing colors. You know, um, we're not all designers, and actually I, I would count myself among that group. We have a talented, wonderful group of people at BusyWeb that design our websites that have that common um, understanding of what looks great, but it's easy to put purple inside of green or use crazy fonts or, you know, use um, Comic Sans, for example, on your website. And that kind of stuff, while it's possible to do, and certainly with the tools that are available to us on the web, it's easy to make very bad choices. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's pretty easy to have that show up and just to present a face to the world that you don't necessarily want. You need to think about how to present the image of your company that you want. And you actually need to think about more than what looks good to you. You need to think about what looks good for your customers and your clients. The point of a website usually is to engage and inform your best prospects. And so you need to write your website from their perspective. And so if you think something's really neat or if you really like Comic Sans, for example, but you're a corporate company that only does business with CPAs or designers, you need to up your game and start thinking about what works best for those types of clients. Another thing that um, comes up quite often is outdated designs. And sad to say that even some of BusyWeb's designed websites are starting to look a little tired on the around the edges. And technology just keeps marching on. You know, if you have autoplay media, and I'm, I'm just talking to another client today that we're updating their website, but they have a website that when you load it up, it automatically starts playing sound. That's a tremendous no-no for people that are browsing in a corporate environment. If you have speakers on your computer and all of a sudden it starts playing a mariachi band logo or, or mariachi band song, um, that's going to turn off that person. Um, even worse, if their browser crashes and they have a number of tabs open, they hit refresh or they reopen their browser and it opens up and your tab happens to be 12 deep. Now they've got a mariachi, mariachi band playing in the background on their computer. They have no idea where that sound is coming from and you've just angered your best clients and prospects by putting something out that is going to be rather obnoxious. You know, in general, let your copy, let your website itself do the talking. You don't need to reach out and throttle people with catchy videos or audio that's designed to play a song. You know, this is probably what killed MySpace at the end of the game. Um, one of the things that MySpace allowed people to do is to play background sounds when you loaded up your uh, MySpace account. And while it was really neat for the users that owned those profiles and they could profess their love for Creed or whoever, um, that really worked poorly for anyone that visited those pages. And then they would never go back again. So that's one of the things that hits. Another thing, of course, is Flash. You're going to hear me talk about Flash a few times. No websites really since in the past five years, if they're designed properly, have had Flash on them. Um, iPhones, Androids don't support Flash media anymore. Um, Chrome itself um, as a web browser doesn't natively support Flash anymore, and you'll see that in a moment um, as I go through my tour. But, uh, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff. Flash is heavy. It makes your website load, load um, slower than it needs to. It's terrible for search engine optimization. There's all kinds of competencies and things that will get goofed up in that site or on your site if you have flash on it it's just not a great idea so keep away from that and again we'll go through more of this in the tour of terrible sites that i'll give you in a moment next up content issues think about and look at the content on your website you know if you have laura mipsum on your website or if you have dummy copy on your website that hasn't been updated or if your content on your website hasn't been updated in more than a few months, your website is stale, it's old, it's not helping anyone. Again, think about what your visitors are expecting when they come to your website. And if they see that your most recent post was from 2010, 
or just as bad 2012 or 13, you're, they're going to note that you really haven't been active on your website and that you don't take it seriously as a marketing um, vehicle. So if you have old content on your website or if it says, you know, our next event coming up is March 13th, 2012, or if you have posts that haven't been updated or haven't been looked at in several years, get some new content out or, you know, at, at a very minimum, take away the things that are very dated and old. If you also have too much content or too much text on your website, you'll see this in my examples in just a little bit, you can overwhelm your reader. The key in web design and in effective use of web technology is really to help your clients find what they need as quickly as possible. You need to think of your website as a brochure that, or not even as a brochure, but as a billboard on the side of the road. People are browsing your website. You get maybe 10 seconds if you're lucky, more often three seconds, where people will click, look to check out your website, if it's been formatted properly for search engine optimization, and we'll cover that in a little bit. But if they click on your website, if they don't see exactly what they're looking for in those first few crucial seconds, they're going to move on. So make sure that you make it easy for people, that you don't make it seem like too much work to interact with your website. And if they have to read a lot of content in order to get the gist of what you do and how you help people, you're missing the, you're missing the boat and people are clicking away. A great indicator of the content worthiness of your website is your bounce rate. If you don't have Google Analytics installed on your website, it's free. And we have some busy webinars on how to install and use busy or how to use Google Analytics. But a high bounce rate means people that click on your website and then go away without clicking anything else. So if you have a bounce rate of you know less than I'd say four, four and a half, five seconds. Um, that's a pretty good indicator that people are just getting fed up or getting turned off when they visit your website and they're clicking away and going somewhere else. They're bouncing off of your website. Also, if you don't have enough content, some clients that we've helped rebuild sites for have just had a single page on their website and that page didn't have any real information. It might have been a scan of a brochure or it might have been just an image. Um, one client that we've had or that we had when we helped them rebuild just had a picture of their business card Didn't have any information on it You had to physically visit that business card page in order to see the phone number and you had to type it in by hand um, There's no clickableness on there. There's no you know You can't just tap it with your thumb and dial the phone and so that really makes it tough for people to interact with you so if you're if you're taking the content of your brochure and slapping that on the web and expecting it to be good, you know, that's really not the best use of websites and not the best use of your browser's time. Finally, you have to make sure that you have great calls to action on your website. People are browsing around, they're looking, they might be in line at Starbucks and viewing on their phone. You have to make it very easy and very obvious as to what that person should do on your website. This, this particular page that I've got a screenshot of right now, despite having Laura Mipsum on the site and being kind of a weird looking site in the first place, um, it has book online today and a resort map on the right. So, you know, all's not lost, but, you know, they're, they're kind of missing out on some of the other content pieces. So having clear calls to action. In general, you should probably have at least three calls to action on every single page of your site. That might be one that's in the footer of every page, um, something in the headline, but you want to tell them to click here, download this, call us for more, do whatever you're asking them to do, and make it very clear and very obvious and not overly salesy. I mean, if you have an e-commerce website, then of course you want people to buy. But especially in social media, people don't expect to be sold as much as just to engage with your ideas. And so they want to have a conversation with you. And if you hit them right away with the equivalent of, hey, you want to buy a watch, it's just not going to help. It's not going to work very well. So make sure that you're careful with your calls to action. Next up, usability. Again, if you don't plan for mobile responsiveness or if you have flash on your website, um, the example that I have here, I'm going, I've, I've blurred out things to protect the guilty. 
but um, that's actually not a untoward image. I just didn't want people to get called out for it. Um, you see the little broken image on the right? That's a flash video that's simply not playing on my version of Chrome because I have it set to block. Um, any, anyone that's going to view that on an Android device, on a Windows phone, or on an iOS, on an iPhone, or an iPad, they're simply not going to be able to see that content, and it's slowing down the website. So if you have huge images on your website, and again, it's, it's easy to load up a four megabyte image that you got off of your phone onto your website, but unless your web browser, unless you've taken the time to optimize that site, you're going to make the download of your web page very, very slow. If someone that's browsing on an edge network or on a 3G network on their phone needs to download a four megabyte file, that could take upwards of several minutes. And in Amazon world and in e-commerce world, they measure millions and hundreds of seconds. They say one hundredth of a second additional download time costs Amazon a million dollars per million or per um, hundredth of a second, or actually I think it's thousandth of a second. So it's a big deal to make people wait. Nobody wants to wait on the web and having anything like that is detrimental and or terrible. You know, if your website takes several seconds for people to load, it's probably not even gonna register a bounce rate because they aren't going to wait, a long, wait, wait around long enough to even wait to click. So if they can't see anything and if it's crazy on the website, if there's a lot of stuff to download, um, or if it's unclear where you wanna go, if the navigation links don't adhere to web standards, and you, usually on the web either there's a sidebar or navigation down the side, which is a little bit passe. Um, now most folks just have a flat navigation bar across the top or along the right-handed side even. Again, for the majority of the world that's right-handed, if you're browsing on a phone and you wanna tap with your thumb, that's a good idea. Um, in general, mobile responsiveness is the watchword of the day, and websites should automatically rebuild themselves based on if they're on a skinny device or not. And so the best way to check to see if your personal website is mobile responsive is just to take that browser window on your PC and squish the page as skinny as it'll go. And that slimmest version of the website is usually about the width of a phone screen. And if your website is simply cut off on one side, or if it looks really weird, then your website's not mobile responsive. Ideally, you should also have a phone number or a, a dialable phone number with the TEL link on it that'll let folks phone or dial you up on your phone with a single click and design your website so that people don't have to click too many places to get to that next step. Again, give them the most relevant call to action right away above the fold, make sure that your website is designed to be viewed um, perfectly well on mobile devices and don't put massive images on your website to slow things down. Let's talk just a little bit about search engine optimization as well. There's a lot of things that you can do very, very terribly with regard to SEO. And if your website was set up for SEO um, six or seven years ago, there's a very good chance that you've seen a dramatic runoff in traffic that you've gotten from Google because a lot of what used to be okay, for example, listing um, meta tags or meta, meta keywords on your website or listing your keyword over and over again at the bottom of every page, for example, um, having every city that you, read, that you work with on the bottom of your website um, on every single page, that's all repetitive text and Google hates that now. The goal for every website, if you want a shorthand for what to do in search engine optimization, is to be as helpful as humanly possible to the people that matter most for you. Take a look at who your best clients are, take a look at and think about what they would type into their search engine browser in order to find you and your products and services and make sure that you talk about that using heading tags and use title and description tags to give people 
a little bit more information. You know, I have busy webinars that go in depth on search engine optimization, so I'm not going to overlabor this point. But in general, your title tag on your website, on any given web page for your website, should be less than 60 characters, and it should tell people at a big, broad, general notion why they should click on the link. You get a chance to add a description to that, and you get about the length of a tweet or about 140 characters to add to that sale, to tell people, here's what you're going to see on this link, here's what we do, here's why we do it, and here's what you're going to find on this page. You have to think about this because while having an About Us page on your website and having About as the title of that page might be perfectly fine inside of your website, if you're visiting your, or if you've come up on Google, there's no additional context on that link to encourage people to, to click on that link. This is your chance to give them a little mini sales pitch on why they should click. And the reason and what you should focus on is what's really interesting to that visitor, to that person that might click on your page. So think about it as being as helpful as, as possible and giving them the reason why they should click on that page. Every image on your website should also have an alt tag. And alt tags are simply when you hover your mouse over an image, it should say what that image is. Ideally, you want that to say what the image or what the content of that page is about so that Google can translate and translate and translate to that and say, oh, there's an image about the topic that this page purports to talk about. So that must be extra helpful and then you're going to rank better. If you use headings incorrectly or if you don't have any H1, H2, H3 tags, for example, if you don't have um, enough content on your website, on your web page, or if you have too much, or if you have invisible text or white text on a white background, for example, or repetitive text, like I mentioned before, with lots and lots of content in the footer of every single page, that will get you downgraded, if not outright banned, by Google. So make sure that you're being careful. You can see, and you know, it's it's kind of prevalent, especially in websites that haven't been updated in around the last eight years, because Google really started turning the screws down on this about you know, 2004, 2005, when things started really getting serious as far as starting to, to limit what you could do in Google search engines. You know, having keywords as meta tags is completely useless now, it's a waste of time, but having great content with great headings that have great and labeled images with easy to digest text that's helpful to your users is the way to go. SEO as a general rule is kind of a passe term as a matter of fact. Now it's called content marketing. And so if you have great content that's semantically coded correctly with the proper title tags, description tags, with alt tags and images, links back and forth um, to content, that's the way to go. Okay, again, I'm, before I dip into awful stuff, I'm just going to switch over to Google Chrome for a moment and make sure that um, we don't have any questions. So as I click here, we'll go over. Okay, so if you haven't had, had the chance to ask a question, go ahead and click that Ask a New Question button. We have a whole bundle of people that are viewing today, so I'm sure some of you have questions. Again, this is also your chance to send me a note and ask for, or if you have a particularly egregious example that you'd like us to see, again, um, please keep it safe for work. But um, send us your notes or your thoughts or if you have a client website or your personal website and you're wondering if you're doing it right or if there's something that you could do do even better by all means send that our way you'll get that by clicking the ask a new question button from the webinar and again if you don't see this screen you can simply go from the embedded view in the busy webinar page click on this google plus link under number one and that's going to take you to this page and from there, you're going to click on this live button. You'll need to have your Google Plus and or your Gmail account active for that. But then you'll be able to just click ask a new question. So let's go back to random awful stuff. There's all kinds of crazy things that are out there on the web. Some of them will make your eyes bleed. Um, I'll give a hat tip right now to um, awful websites, I believe. Or this is, um, 
websites that suck. So websites that suck.com. If you just Google terrible websites, website that suck, websites that suck.com will pop up. And um, there's a whole bundle of options or examples. I've called my least favorite examples from across the web, and I'm going to share those in a moment. But this one I thought was particularly egregious. And um, it has flashing buttons. It has an animated slider that has terrible um, items across it. They're, they're just clashy, you know, yellow and red and purple and blue. Weird icons across the top. Too much action. This thing is the, the slider at the top goes very, very fast. And there's even some lorem ipsum on the page, which is you know, just dummy Latin text that designers put in there as placeholders. If you Google um, lorem ipsum, and actually put quotes around like the first paragraph of lorem ipsum you'll find examples of all kinds of websites that their designers put it together they put some placeholder text in and then they never updated it the really sad ones are the ones that are six seven years old that still have lorem ipsum text on them that helps you approximately zero and so you know if, if nonsense text is out there if there's a lot of craziness on your website you're really kind of missing the point and you're not getting as much pop as you could out of your website. So let's take another little mini tour. And again, this is your chance to ask those questions. So please do just click on the ask a question, ask a new question button. I've got my eyes on those. So please do um, get a hold of me on there. Um, I'm going to click on the Q and A button over here. So I've got that. So I'm watching for those now. But um, here's some examples. So, you know, in general, you know, this, this website is ugly itself, but it has some pretty decent, um, some pretty decent what not to do's on SEO. If you just go to seonightmares.com, this is actually great content couched in terrible design and, uh, you know, keyword stuffing, adding too many keywords into your website. So if I was talking about web design and I published a page and I said, BusyWeb is a web design company focusing in web design in seven different states. We're a web design company that does web design in web design ways. That's keyword stuffing. By, in general, a perfectly formed um, article for SEO should be around 300 words in length and no more than 5.5% of the content of that website or about you know, 10, 15 instances should be the keyword that you're trying to rank for. Um, should also have at least one link on it, um, probably about one and a half or two links on your website. So shoot for at least two links on any page. Can be internal to other pages on your website, can be external to other places in the web, but uh, make sure that you do that. Um, don't duplicate content all over. Don't use illegal or invisible text. Um, and then making sure that you don't block things and that you don't have weird URLs on your website is also very, very wrong. So that's SEO generals. Um, here's some examples. If you go to branded3.com, they have a great example of the top 10 worst websites you'll wish you hadn't seen. Here's my favorite of all of them. And I'm going to turn this on. So imagine you've just hit refresh on your browser and this is showing up. So I'm going to pause that. They do have the, the mute button um, actually prominently displayed. But look at this. This is slowing down your website. It's, it's cute and it, um, it kind of grabs some attention. Certainly it got my click and us to view it on here. But, you know, this, this is not a gorgeous website. Um, you know, <laughs> aside from this, you know, it's got the floating meats around. It has some pretty decent stuff on it. It has a great call to action on the homepage. But it's so weird that um, when I'm trying to browse up or down, I'm just hitting the up or down button, and that's all that it flies up and down the page because it's just crazy. You know, this is in the U.K., so, you know, sorry if, if the wholesale meets Coventry website if, uh, if those folks are walking, watching, I apologize. But great example of some crazy stuff. All right, let's go to the next page. Um, this is web pages that suck again. And so going into this one, if you uh, look at this is the Riverside page, and note that even though I'm browsing at 100%, I have to scroll around to find all of the content on this page. You know, this is terrible, awful, ugly stuff. 
Um, they have images, copyrighted images all over the site. They have attention, Amazon users, and you know, it's, you, you got to give them a little bit of, of uh, a break because this is obviously not a going organization. It's a nonprofit. But just because you're nonprofit doesn't mean that you should assault the eyeballs of your visitors. So, again, big example, old navigation. You know, there is no such thing as mobile responsivity on this site. And as a matter of fact, if I take this and I scroll it down, this is what I mean by making your web, by doing the mobile responsive test. I'm making it as skinny as possible, and it just there's nothing to show on the site because it doesn't it doesn't adjust or respond at all. Um, Preterist archive, all kinds of weird things. Despite from the terrible text on here and uh, the overall craziness, you know they've got some bad backgrounds. It's ugly stuff, um, kind of all around. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to click on. Click to visit the old home page. This is Liberty Van. This is their new one. I hate to see what their old one would look to look like. And uh, scroll down. The text is wrapping over the top of the images. There's no alt tags on these images. Um, it's it's an art car thing, so I get it. And if you look at the car, you can see why their website would kind of match that. But holy smokes, this is crazy. Um, I'm curious to let me close that down again. Um, I'm curious to actually take a peek at this one on the old homepage. Um, okay, that's that's just as bad. So it talks about CV handles and all kinds of stuff. Um, pretty interesting. So as you look at this, there's, there's all kinds of wonderfulness that you should avoid. Um, hairstyling page, you know, Save Our Beaches, the old repeating background thing on here. Um, Rollover images, again, that's it, the, the donut gets hotter, I guess, when you roll over. So um, I guess that's that's interesting. But uh, wowzers, pretty crazy. They've got a traffic counter. I'm sure most of those traffic counters are due to the web pages that suck link. And then this is that um, eye bleeder that uh, had all kinds of stuff on here. Now it's got... Rollover images on here that does you absolutely no good for the web. I can't even see the entire page as I'm browsing on my full on my full screen. And again, you know this this just doesn't work. So as we look at this, it it, it kind of tries to respond, but those sliders are really messing things up. So it just doesn't work. Um, lots of colors, lots of images, lots of confusion on here. Um, hard to tell what to do, how to do it, why to do it. And it's just confusing. So the bounce rate has got to be massive on this one. Um, Magic of Baltimore. Lots of images. Again, the text is hard to read. You can't see this. It's black on red um, and with a funky font. These are all images. And because the text is so funky, um, having, having pretty images is, um, is not, or, or weird fonts, is not technically... Um, helpful. So, you know, as you look at this, it's it's just I, I I'm not even a, I'm not even um, picking on the black background because in general that's not a terrible thing. But you know, as you look at this, it's it's just not helping you. So, and this is a blogger page or a blogspot page. So you know they're kind of limited. But again, go back to the random templates. And in general, if you have an awful website. There are free templates out there on WordPress in, to, to get you back to the back to basics. If you just search for a mobile responsive theme in any of your designs, and it doesn't matter if you're going to Wix or WordPress or you know any of the other places, um, in general, you'll get what you pay for. So if you work with a real web design company like BusyWeb, we can help guide you through this process and save you from yourself a little bit. But you know, think about and at least do something if you haven't looked at your website in more than three or four years. Um, parts and services, Rover Parts, you know, this is a UK-based site. Um, again, scrolls right off the side of the page, yellow and red, a little bit tough on the eyes. Um, the images are tough to read, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I guess it must be doing something or it wouldn't have been out here for that long. Um, a wrestling training. 
um, uh, all kinds of people dancing and jumping around. Um, not, not, not great, right? So red, white, and blue, I get that. Understand it, but um, wow. Train weekly or fight weekly. Um, week with W-E-A-K. Haha, I get it. Um, and, you know, the URL is weird. The content rolls over, um, but there's no alt tags or any details on these images. So, you know, just all kinds of stuff that you should avoid. Um, truth with people, or again, this is all examples off of ugly websites. Um, and here's a page that has all kinds of lorem ipsum on it. So if I Google up, um, you can see this. Contrary to popular belief, lorem ipsum, blah, 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 blah. H1, H2, H3s um, just doesn't help you much. So that's that's a brief tour of some really, really terrible sites. So if you have any examples of your own, um, I will invite you to add those up right now. I'm going to close these out quickly so that we can go back to our page. And uh, once we get back to the actual event here, Again, if you want to click on the green Ask a New Question button, that's the way to go. Otherwise, I'm simply going to switch back over and let's wrap you up. So again, as a reminder, BusyWeb is a web design company. So we're going to design websites for you that will help you to reach out, engage, inform, capture, and convert your clients. And so think about what needs to happen in the first 10 seconds of your website and think about getting the leads that you need from your business and helping your website grow. Also, make sure that you integrate with social media to cast the broadest network and take some time. I could do the same thing with social media don'ts with people that post up ugly images or no, no um, images at all on their Facebook page or on their Twitter account. And you know, make your brand represent you and your company from the vein that you want people to actually want to work with you. So think about who your clients are, think about what interests them, think about their design needs, and hire a professional, if at all possible, to help you get to that next step. We also do web hosting, so we can help you out with that. We'll actually do that inside of WordPress primarily, but um, if you have needs or other things that you'd like to get covered, we actually do automatic backups and security for all of our websites. We take care of our clients. We make sure that it's easy for them to manage and maintain their own website. And we really do believe in the ethos of generate buzz without getting stung. And so we build that for our clients in a way that they manage, maintain, and control it, but they're running with the safety net on a fast, progressive, and social enhanced website. Buzz Builders is our online marketing offering and we can do search engine optimization writing, Google AdWords, email marketing, and more for you to help you grow your business. And finally, make sure to join us every Wednesday. Every single Wednesday we've got articles up and I'll move over to this in just a moment. Actually, let me click over there for just a sec. If I go to my upcoming events page and go, if you click on BusyWeb's events calendar, what we've got coming up next month February 4th is email marketing for success, followed by customizing your WordPress theme, how to take care of that, offers and promotions, and then social media advertising. So be sure to tune in. We will have a few other examples or a few other options. And um, if you're in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, we are going to um, embark on a number of in-person webinars or seminars across the state. Um, starting up here in February, so very excited about that, but please be sure to tune in. Go to busyweb.com slash events to register and to watch. You can ask questions in advance every week. And then finally, if you'd like to have us look at your website and tell you what you could do in order to grow your business and to help out, um, go to busyweb.com slash buzz to register for your free buzz report. We're going to run a search engine optimization analysis as well as tell you the things that you're doing great and the things that could really get you better results on the web. And we promise we'll be gentle, but we will point out if your website is ugly. So thank you very much for joining me today. Again, be sure to join me next week for 
the um, content marketing on the web. So email marketing for success. We're going to talk about small business marketing campaigns and how to graft those and make a successful email that's going to reach out and engage your clients. So we'll see you next week. Again, I'm Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, reminding you that at BusyWeb we help you generate buzz without getting stung. Thank you very much and see you next week.